Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, your home for all content, Lord of the Rings home. It's patch Thursday. We got a big update today with some big fixes in it. So let's go through it. There's a bunch of stuff I want to cover. We're going to start with Legolas. They released his kit, right? They accidentally forgot to leave out that he has a leader ability. So this is not in the original kit reveal video or just in the on the website when they initially released it. But he's got a leader ability, which is great because if you were free to play or a light spender and you're farming up elves, but you missed Elrond or you're waiting to get Elrond on the second time around, now you can get a free three-star marquee that's going to sort of tie your elf squad together, which is going to be great for raids, I think. So let's go through it. Ability description at unlock. When an elf squad member evades an attack, 50% chance for that squad member to gain deadly for one turn. It basically increases your crit chance. By 30%, I believe. And then at max upgrade, when an elf squad member evades an attack, they gain deadly for two turns. When an elf squad member crits, they have a 70% chance to gain haste for one turn, which I think it either gives you 30 or 50% bo speed boost, which is pretty good. So you go from having a 50% chance when you evade to a guaranteed chance, plus it's extended to two turns, and then you also get haste on top of that. So this is pretty good because there's a lot of different sort of nimble mechanics with uh, elves. Elodin has them. Arwen has them. Uh, uh, Lomian has them if you're using Lomian. Naramiri, I believe, has them. And Leliel also has them. So pretty much all the elves have some sort of nimble mechanic with them. So I think this is actually a pretty decent leadership ability sort of as a patch in to get things going there. Plus, it might tell us that there might be some sort of Merkwood team later on down the road that he could be a leader for. I don't think this is the leadership ability that's meant to be used with the Fellowship. That's probably going to come from Gandalf. But uh, this is a nice little, nice little update and feature there. And then one other thing. Let's switch over to the game here. With this up, update your game, because now they've got all of these packs back in here. Uh, as well as the patch itself, right? And these are interesting. I think pretty much all of them are are not are not that great. But if you are a light spender, getting Halberad shards for thirty U.S. dollars plus twenty light crystals, I think this is a decent deal. Um, and this is something you should consider if you're a light spender and Halberad is somebody you're focusing on. These other deals or you know maybe if you really like rohan you could get this one but i'm not convinced about any of these other deals uh and then this this pack offer here 20 dollars for 55 shadow crystals 55 light crystals and 40k that's probably on par with what they usually give like some of their better deals for the crystals and the gold um and that's it from there you can see with this patch we've got the events in here 10 days to Gimli, and three days. So it starts on Monday, remember. It starts on Monday for Legolas. I'm uh, pretty excited. I, I do, I love the stained glass artwork. I actually really like that art direction that they went in. I, I think it looks terrific. Okay, so let's get to the patch notes. Let me bring up Discord here. And we're just going to go through them. I skimmed them a little bit, um, but I didn't read them with a very keen eye, I should say. Okay, this is basically all stuff that we've been over already, um, stuff that you probably already know. Legolas and Gimli are coming to the game. Here are the event times. Here are the, basically, rewards for each tier. It's the same that it was for Arwen and Elodin. That same sort of setup. Um, except maybe that's... I guess there's a difference here... Interesting. So it looks like, you know, there's seven tiers here, six tiers here. Um, and it could just be that you need more more uh, character shards, or they wanted to do a different tier for some sort of story reason for Legolas than for, for Gimli. Okay. Arwen is not becoming farmable, but is becoming purchasable. So Arwen is now purchasable in the supply store, much like Brute or Aldred or the Great Goblin. So five or ten character shards, and the purchase will require gems. Um, maybe I'll do some math at some point and figure out whether it's better to... Oh, those chests are gone, actually. So now this is the only way you can get Arwen. 
The Grey Wanderer approaches. Players will receive a message via their in-game inbox informing them that Gimli Legless will be coming to the game shortly, as well as another old Fellowship friend. This is, of course, Gandalf the Grey that they're talking about. I strongly, strongly suspect that he is going to be either the sh character shards you get from the raid reward boxes themselves, or he's going to be a character you can purchase with the raid tokens. Okay. From our observations, we noticed that the power of individual characters according to their star level were not where we would like them to be. As players collect shards to increase the star level of characters, the base stats of that character should increase proportionally to that effort. As such, base stats for all characters that have four stars or higher will be increased. There will be no changes to characters which are three stars or lower. So this is in the next major update. So not this update, but sometime in the near future here, probably like a uh, title update or something big like that. So let's take a look at this table. Well, that didn't do anything. Okay, so at four star, we go from 1.3 to 1.6. So that's like already a double in the percentage. And then it just gets more and more stacked from here. So previous to this, basically everybody noticed the biggest jump in stats going from six to seven stars. And it seemed like it was about an 8% 8, 8 increase in stats. I guess that's... Uh, um, wrong because it was a two. It was a two hundred percent increase in base stats, and maybe it just gets convoluted with all the gear and and things like that. But uh, this is pretty intense. So that that's it was already a big change going from six to seven stars, and now they're going to double that change, specifically for seven stars. So this is going to make the top of arena shards really pull away from everybody else. So unless you dropped you know, uh, a couple grand on getting things to seven stars like Elrond, then you are going to get, people are going to pull away from you. Um, but it's nice when you can then farm up your other characters. So, you know, the advice might actually change. A lot of people are saying, stop at three stars. You don't need to go past that. Save your gold. And that might, that advice might change specifically when they add raids. If you have the resources to take people up now, then um, maybe it's worth doing it to five stars or something like that. We'll go over that in a future video. Due to the above stat increases, we will be updating our higher-end content to keep parity with where players are across the board. So the average win-loss rate should remain the same when using the characters of the intended power for the content. Uh, maybe they're worried about people low-balling things like challenges and the hard campaigns. So they're changing, yeah, Chapter 5 and Chapter 6 normal and Chapter 5 hard of the light campaign. Chapter 5 and Chapter 6, Normal Shadow Campaign, and then Chapter 4, Mission 7 onwards, and Chapter 5, Hard. Interesting. Yeah, okay, and then all of the daily challenges. So try and get your challenges, like, maxed out before they do this update, because we don't know whether it's going to make it easier or, or harder, but if it makes it harder, then you, it seems like you might lose out on some stuff. And they also changed the difficulty of Sam's journey, tier two hard. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend that you try and get as much of these maxed as soon as possible because we just don't know how it's going to change after the fact. We're aware of a mismatch between the English language and the translated language descriptions of both Gimli's special ability two and his passive. Okay, the English language value is correct. So I guess refer to that if you uh, speak a different language, just refer to the number values in the English language site. Here are some bug fixes. I think we're looking forward to some of these and hopefully they got some of the big ones out of the way. Okay, this is a big one. The prerequisites for tier two of the Sam campaign have been fixed. You can now bring your three-star Sam into the battles for this campaign. Note that there's a tooltip error when viewing missing requirements. That's a minor visual issue that will be fixed in a future update. So before this, you couldn't you unlocked Sam at three stars, right? And then the next tier of Sam's journey required four star hobbits and strider, and you couldn't bring Sam in with you. So you had to do it all with four four uh, you know four characters, which made it really hard. Um, this is a fix that's been on a lot of people's minds. And I'm glad that they've finally decided to fix this. This is a this is big news here. Um, I'm personally still not going to upgrade my hobbits, so this isn't relevant to me. But I know a lot of people were interested in, in doing this type of thing, um, so I'm glad to see they fixed it. 
Arena of rewards have been adjusted to pay out at 6 p.m. player local time instead of 2 p.m. I like that change. Uh, if you already received it, you're not going to get it twice. And basically they fixed some messaging. And Shadow Campaign Chapter 6 has been revised from 8 energy per attempt. I think it, it was either probably at 6 or 10 and they revised it to 8. Fixed an issue where Lord Elrond's leader ability could give fortitude to Rivendell characters on an enemy team. Glad they fixed this. This uh, this is going to make, I think, uh, mirror matches a little bit more consistent. Um, yeah. Resolved an issue where players could counter a soft lock when leveling up Frodo in the tutorial. Glad to see that they're still fixing those soft lock issues. I know they bother a lot of people. They got a good chunk of them done, but there's still some. And I think those are kind of like game interest killers. You you know you start the game and then you're soft locked in the game and you're like, well, I think I'm done with the game. So it's good to see that they're still working on those. Updated the ability description, text within Elder Here 2's special ability to be more clear when Elodin is an ally. Okay, um, probably still works the same, but they just updated the text. Fixed an issue with Elder Here Special 2, Elven Vengeance, where stealth was not triggering, triggering correctly when certain boons were applied to him. This was like stacks of boons, like uh, Provoke, which Elder Here can't get, but it's things like Nimble and Counterattack and and uh, the defensive one as well uh, were not triggering him going into stealth. And I, they've fixed that, I guess. And that should be now in line with, you know, stacks of things are what count for these elf skills. So if you have four stacks of provoke, that counts as four boons. Just an issue with Shagrat's leader ability. This has been a big one, especially in the uh, main discord. There are a couple of really big Mordor guys, and they've been really concerned about Shagrat's leader ability because it didn't let... Yes, the turn meter was not being granted to all allies when attacking an enemy with at least one bane. And so now that's been fixed. So it'll be really good to see how uh, uh, Mordor team sort of faces up, squares up in the meta. Um, it's probably still not going to beat the Elrond team, but it's probably going to do much better against a lot of other teams. Address an issue where Feely's basic riveting smash would heal the ally with the lowest health rather than healing the ally that is most wounded. There's actually a big text confusion uh, that I brought up when it comes to Arwen and Elrond's skills as well, because they say most wounded ally, but Elrond's basic behaves differently than Arwen, uh, Arwen's skill and Elrond's other skills. So hopefully we get some clarification on that in the future. Resolved an issue where Ajax special two, Cold Week was not doing any damage if he had stealth applied. Well, how could he do damage? He can't see them. Uh, fixed an issue, Grimpa's passive, prickly nuisance, when weakened was not being applied correctly to the attacker. Okay, good bug fix. Fixed an issue with light campaign, chapter two, mission seven, some VFX issues. Addressed an issue where Lomian's counterattack was only being applied to melee attacks. Oh, well, I had not seen that before because I haven't used Lomian a lot, but that's interesting. Good, glad they got that fixed. Shadow crystals are now displayed correctly for certain nodes. Another soft lock fix, a red dawn, completed state, even though the players have not met the requirements. I, that must be a quest that I'm not aware of. I haven't seen anything. Various localiz localization and translation improvements. So I think one of the big quality of life fixes that I still would like to see is, um, and maybe I hadn't updated my game completely, but sometimes I feel like I still get... Um, when, when there's like multiple gear pieces I can put on a character, you know, and you click equip all, sometimes it actually means you can only equip like one out of three or two out of three, but it still has equip all and then it gets stuck and doesn't apply any of them. I've been noticing that that's still going on. That's just a quality of life thing that I would like to have uh, addressed. Um, I can't think of any other big bug fixes off the top of my head. Sam campaign was a big one. Shagrat's leader ability was a big one. Elra here's special was a big one. Um, and some of the soft lock stuff was also a pretty big one. Oh, um, people not being able, like their calendar showing up and then not being able to claim it, like the button is missing because it's not the correct time. That's just kind of an annoying thing. Um, that's probably another big one as well. 
But uh, I'm excited to see that they're continuing to still work on bugs, and I'm excited to get Legolas and Gimli next week. Um, and I appreciate you all continuing to watch the videos, and uh, I'll, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.